Hey, everyone, and welcome to our deep dive, mm -hmm. you know, into this fascinating world of plasma. Oh, yeah. It's one of those things we hear about, right? Yeah. Uh, but maybe don't always truly grasp. Absolutely. So today we're going to change that. Yeah. We're going to explore not just what plasma IS. Right. Um, you know, that superheated, energized gas that makes up things like stars. Mm -hmm. But also, you know how we're using it right. as a tool to shape the future in some seriously mind-blowing ways. Yeah, what's so fascinating is that it's often seen as this exotic thing. Yeah. But it's far more common right. and impactful than I think most people realize. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Sure. For anyone who needs a refresher, what exactly IS plasma? Well, imagine you're taking a gas okay. and just cranking up the heat until the atoms themselves start to break down. Oh, wow. Electrons, those tiny negatively charged particles, right. they get so energized they break free, oh, leaving yeah. behind positively charged ions. Okay. And it's this mix of free-floating electrons and ions. That is plasma. Okay. That's the fourth state of matter. So it's not just about the heat. Right. It's about the atoms changing at a very fundamental level. Precisely. And that transformation gives plasma some really unique properties yeah, yeah. that set it apart from solids, liquids, and gases. Okay. Think electrical conductivity responsiveness to magnetic fields uh -huh. and the ability to emit light. Wait, so that's how neon signs work? Yes. It's not just colored gas. It's actual plasma glowing. Exactly. I've walked by those things a million times. Uh, I know. Never knew that. It's amazing. That's so cool. Each gas, when energized into plasma, emits a very specific color. Oh, wow. So that neon sign that you see right. is essentially a controlled display of glowing plasma. That's so cool. But it's not just neon signs. Yeah, right? not at all. You mentioned stars earlier. And I remember learning that our sun is basically a giant ball of plasma. It is, the like all stars, is a colossal fusion reactor. Wow. Imagine hydrogen atoms smashing together That's at unimaginable speeds. Crazy. Releasing this torrent of energy. Wow. That's the power of fusion. Yeah. And it's all happening within this giant ball of plasma. So all that sunlight, we feel all that energy that makes life on Earth possible. Mm -hmm. It's all thanks to plasma. Yeah. That's incredible. But it's not just in the distant reaches of space, right? No. You mentioned plasma being more common than we think. Right. Even here on Earth, mm -hmm. plasma is more present than we might realize. Okay. Take lightning, for example. Oh, yeah. That sudden bright flash mm -hmm. is actually a channel of plasma. Oh. Created by a massive electrical discharge. So every time I see a lightning storm, I'm essentially witnessing miniature stars streaking across the sky. Well, lightning isn't continuously generating energy. Right. Through fusion like a star. Yeah. But you're right, the core principle is the same. Okay. A sudden burst of energy ionizing the air. Yeah. And creating this temporary plasma channel. Wow, okay. That's pretty mind-blowing. Yeah. And what about those incredible auroras, those shimmering curtains of light? Yeah. You see near the poles. Yeah. They're plasma too, right? They are. Wow. And they're a beautiful example of how plasma interacts with magnetic fields. Okay. You see the sun constantly releases the stream of charged particles, right. what we call the solar wind. Right. And when those particles reach Earth, they're guided towards the poles by our planet's magnetic field. And that somehow creates those amazing light shows. Exactly. As those charged particles slam into the atoms yeah. in our upper atmosphere, wow. they transfer energy, causing the atoms to ionize and form plasma. Wow. And as this plasma returns to a lower energy state, okay. it releases light painting, those mesmerizing auroral displays. It's like a cosmic light show, all thanks to plasma. It really is. But beyond these natural occurrences, humans are also finding ways to use plasma as a tool. Right, right absolutely. And that's where things get really interesting. Okay. We're harnessing plasma's unique properties okay. for all sorts of applications. From everyday technology to cutting edge scientific advancements. All all right, I'm ready to hear about this. Okay. What are some of the ways that we are putting plasma to work? Well, for starters, think about the way you're watching this right now. Yeah. Many screens, especially older flat screen TVs, right. utilize plasma technology. Oh, yeah. I remember those plasma TVs being all the rage. I know. They had those incredibly vibrant colors. Yeah, that's because each pixel on a plasma screen mm -hmm. is like a tiny fluorescent light. 
Really? Powered by plasma. Wow. By controlling the intensity of the plasma discharge in each pixel. Okay. To get those sharp, colorful images. That's pretty ingenious, but plasma technology goes far beyond our TV screens, right? Oh, yeah. I've heard about it being used in industrial settings, too. Yeah, you're thinking of plasma cutting. Right. It's an incredibly precise wow. and powerful way to cut through metals. Okay, walk me through how that actually happens. Imagine a superheated jet of plasma. Okay. So hot it can slice through steel like butter. This is achieved by using an electrical arc right. to ionize a gas, mm. creating that incredibly hot focused plasma jet. I never realized something so powerful could be so precise. Yeah. It's like a scalpel made of pure energy. Yeah. But wouldn't that intense heat warp the metal? So how do you control the precision? It's the combination of the extreme heat okay. and the electrical conductivity of the plasma right. that makes it so effective. Huh. The heat melts the metal okay. while the electrical current helps to control the cut, oh, wow. resulting in those clean, precise edges. So plasma is not only incredibly hot, but it can be controlled with incredible precision. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's not just about cutting metal, right? No. I've heard whispers about plasma being used in medicine, too. Yeah, you're right. Plasma is showing incredible promise in healthcare as well that's awesome one of the most exciting areas is sterilization sterilization <laughs> i'm curious how does plasma play a role in that think of it this way plasma when generated at lower temperatures is teeming with these reactive particles that can obliterate bacteria and viruses oh wow it's like a microscopic cleaning crew huh disrupting the cell walls and DNA of those harmful microorganisms. So it's not just heat we're talking about here. It's about those reactive particles within the plasma doing the heavy lifting. Exactly. And what's remarkable is that this cold plasma can sterilize even delicate medical instruments and surfaces right. without causing damage. Wow. Something traditional heat sterilization methods can't always do. That's a game changer for medicine. Yes. So plasma can kill bacteria and viruses without damaging delicate equipment. Yes. Are there any other medical applications in development? There are many researchers are exploring how to use plasma for everything from wound healing to treating skin conditions and even fighting cancer cells. Oh, wow. It's a rapidly evolving field yeah. with the potential to revolutionize how we approach healthcare. Welcome back to our deep dive into this incredible world of plasma. Yeah. We've already uncovered so much. I know, you know right? from its role in the cosmos to its everyday uses. Yeah. Um, but it feels like we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. Oh, absolutely. You're right. We've explored how we're already using plasma as a tool. Right. But now let's step into the realm of the future. Okay. What could plasma help us achieve yeah. in the years to come? Okay. I am ready for some mind-blowing possibilities. Okay. What's got you most excited? Let's talk about one of humanity's biggest challenges. Okay. Finding a clean and sustainable energy source. Right. And guess what? What? Plasma might just hold the key. Wait, are we talking about fusion energy, that almost mythical source of clean power? The one and only. Wow. Remember how we talked about the sun being a giant fusion reactor right. powered by plasma? Yeah. Well, scientists have been working for decades to recreate that process what? here on Earth, uh -huh. and they're getting closer all the time. But how do we even begin to contain something that hot? Right. I mean, we're talking about temperatures hotter than the core of the sun. It's a monumental challenge, no doubt. Yeah. But researchers are using these incredibly sophisticated devices okay. called tokamaks and stellarators, right. which use powerful magnetic fields to contain that superheated plasma. Whoa. It's like trying to hold lightning in a bottle, but on a much grander scale. Exactly. So instead of burning fossil fuels, we could be harnessing the power of the stars right here on Earth. Yeah. What would that even look like? Imagine a future where power plants are no longer spearing out harmful emissions. Right. Where our energy needs are met by clean, safe fusion reactors, uh -huh. all thanks to the incredible properties of plasma. Okay, I'm definitely getting those futuristic vibes now. Yeah. But I've also heard that fusion energy is still decades away. Right. What are some of the hurdles that scientists are still trying to overcome? The biggest challenge is achieving what's called ignition. Okay. The point where the fusion reaction becomes self-sustaining. Right. Producing more energy than it consumes. It's this delicate balancing act of heat pressure and confinement. So we need those magnetic fields to not only contain the plasma, yeah. but also to squeeze it tight enough to make those atoms fuse. Right. It sounds incredibly complex. It is. Yeah. But every year it brings new breakthroughs. 
That's we're developing new materials that can withstand those extreme temperatures. Mm. And we're constantly refining the design of those tokamax and stellarators. Right. It's a truly global effort. It's amazing to think that someday our homes could be powered by miniature fusion reactors. Yeah. All thanks to breakthroughs in plasma research. It's amazing. But fusion energy isn't the only frontier where plasma is poised to make a major impact, is it? No, not at all. What about space travel? Ah, uh, yes, space travel. Remember those plasma thrusters we touched on earlier? Yes. Well, they could revolutionize how we explore the cosmos. Right. I'm all for faster and more efficient space travel. Okay. How do these plasma thrusters actually work? I mean, we're used to rockets burning fuel to create thrust. Right, instead of burning chemical propellants. Yeah. Imagine using electricity and magnetic fields okay. to superheat and accelerate plasma, uh. creating thrust. Wow. It's like a high-tech ion engine, Okay. but with a much greater kick. So instead of fiery exhaust, we'd be shooting plasma out the back of our spaceships. Exactly. That's so cool. And because plasma can be accelerated to much higher speeds than traditional rocket exhaust, right. we could reach distant destinations much faster. Wow. And more efficiently. So we're talking about cutting travel times to Mars or even venturing beyond our solar system. Yeah. That's the kind of space exploration I've always dreamed of. Those are the kinds of possibilities that plasma thrusters offer. Yeah. They could open up entirely new frontiers in space exploration, right. allowing us to venture farther and faster than we ever thought possible. This is all incredibly exciting. It is. But it also makes you think about the bigger picture. With all this potential power comes responsibility, right? You're absolutely right. As we continue to develop these incredibly powerful plasma technologies, right. we need to carefully consider the ethical implications. What kind of ethical considerations are we talking about? Give me an example. Well, take fusion energy. Uh, it has the potential to solve our global energy crisis. Right. But we need to ensure that everyone benefits from this technology, right. not just a select few. So it's not just about the science. It's about making sure these advancements benefit all of humanity. Exactly. Not just those who can afford it, or those in certain parts of the world. Precisely. We need to think about things like equitable access to these technologies, yeah. as well as potential environmental impacts. It's a reminder that with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. We need to approach these advancements with careful planning and thoughtful consideration of their broader impact. Absolutely. Like the future of plasma is incredibly bright. But it's up to us to ensure that it's a future that benefits all of humanity and our planet. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today, from the fundamentals of plasma to its mind-blowing potential in energy production and space travel. It's clear that this unique state of matter is poised to shape our future in some profound ways. We've only just begun to scratch the surface. Right. There's a whole universe of plasma possibilities still waiting to be explored. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the final part of our deep dive into the world of plasma. Oh, it's been a fun one. It has, we've seen how it powers stars. Yeah. Shapes lightning. Right. And could even revolutionize energy production and space travel. Absolutely. But there's so much more to uncover. There really is. Like we've talked about, those yeah. big futuristic applications. Right. Um, but plasmid is also quietly making waves in some unexpected areas. Yeah, I think that's what's so cool about it. Right. It's not just this far off thing. It's affecting our lives right now. Totally. Okay, okay so what are some of these unexpected applications? Well, let's start with something that affects us all. Okay. The environment. Right. We know we're facing some serious challenges from pollution to waste disposal. Yeah, for sure. Well, plasma could be a key player in tackling those issues head on. Wait, plasma can help clean up the environment? Yeah. That doesn't sound intuitive at all. How does that even work? It all comes down to plasma's ability to break down matter at a molecular level. Okay. Think of it as a supercharged recycling system. Oh, wow. We can use plasma to treat hazardous waste, uh -huh. turning those harmful substances into harmless byproducts. So instead of burying toxic waste or trying to contain it, we could actually break it down into its basic elements using plasma. Exactly. Plasma can neutralize those toxic chemicals, break them down into their fundamental building blocks. Wow which can then be safely reused or disposed of. That's amazing. It's a much cleaner and more efficient approach than traditional methods. I can't help but think of those sci-fi movies where they use lasers to disintegrate things. Oh, no, right? It's like we're turning fiction into reality. Yeah. But you mentioned other environmental applications as well. Yes. What else can plasma do? It's incredibly versatile. Yeah, we can right. use it to purify water removing contaminants and making it safe to drink. Oh, wow. We can even use plasma to clean the air. 
removing pollutants and improving air quality. Uh -huh. And perhaps most excitingly, research is being done on using plasma to break down plastics, Healthy. which could revolutionize how we deal with plastic waste. It's amazing how this one state of matter can be applied to so many different challenges. It's like plasma is a universal tool helping us solve problems across multiple fields. It truly is a remarkable tool. Yeah. And its potential applications seem to be expanding all the time, speaking of tools. Yeah. Let's move on to another area where plasma is making a big impact, advanced manufacturing. Okay, I'm all ears. Yep. How is plasma changing the way we build things? We've already talked about plasma cutting. Right. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Plasma is being used to create new materials with unique properties, mm. to coat surfaces with protective layers, right. and even to 3D print incredibly complex objects. We hold on plasma 3D printing. I have to admit that sounds pretty futuristic. It is a cutting edge technology, yeah. but it's rapidly advancing. That's so cool. Researchers are using plasma jets to melt and fuse powders together. Okay. Layer by layer. Right. Building up intricate 3D structures with incredible precision. So we're not just talking about making simple shapes. We're talking about crafting incredibly complex objects. Mm -hmm. Maybe even things like custom medical implants. Yeah. Or lightweight super strong components for spacecraft. Exactly. Plasma 3D printing could revolutionize manufacturing. Wow. Giving us the ability to create objects with highly customized designs and wow. unique material properties. This whole deep dive has been an incredible journey. Yeah. It's amazing to think that something as seemingly simple as ionized gas can have such a profound impact on our world, from the smallest microchip to the vastness of space. What a wild ride. It's been a pleasure exploring the world of plasma with you. Likewise. And to think we've only just scratched the surface. Right. There are so many more mysteries to uncover and applications to explore. It's truly a frontier of science. I have to say, I started this deep dive thinking plasma was just a cool, exotic state of matter. But now I see it as this powerful force of nature, this incredible tool we're just beginning to understand. That's a great way to put it. Plasma is both a fundamental part of our universe. Yeah and a key to unlocking a future filled with possibilities. Well said, and on that note, I wanna thank you, our expert, for guiding us through this incredible journey through the world of plasma. And to all our listeners, thank you for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you learned something new, something exciting, and something that sparked your curiosity. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.